You know, I think this has to be one of my most recommended pieces of miniature painting gear. Uh, probably paintbrushes is number one, but the Badger Patriot 105 is definitely way up there. It's a very common question in the forums and Facebook groups I'm a part of. You know, what airbrush does everybody start with? What airbrush should I start with? What does everyone use? Um, and it's the question I had. I asked the same question in the forums two years ago, I guess now, something like that. And this is what I landed on, the Badger Patriot 105. It's not that it's the absolute best airbrush out there for any application of paint that you're gonna put on a miniature. It's more a fact that it is excellent at what you need it to do when you are a beginner. Uh, either a beginner miniature painter or a beginner at airbrushes in general regardless of how much painting you've done with an actual brush. If you're just starting with an airbrush, you want something that is easy to use, really good at priming, really good at base coating, really easy to maintain and keep clean. Um, that is the Badger Patriot 105. It checks all those boxes and it comes in at $80, which is not the cheapest airbrush out on the market, but it's also not a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars for an airbrush. Uh, and that's just the airbrush, not even taking into consideration the compressor. Back when I was looking into airbrushes uh, for the first time, I remember having a lot of resistance around how tough this was going to be to do. <laughs> and if I could, I mean, I don't have a lot of artistic background. I'm not especially good at painting itself uh I, it's something that i've had to learn over time so with the airbrush it was another challenge and what i could tell you after buying the 105 and really any good airbrush is that it's not as hard as you might think it is so if you're having that resistance i just want to let you know that once you get this set up if you're going to prime a miniature it's really as easy as pouring primer in the cup pressing down, pulling back, and the primer shoots out of the airbrush. That's really all there is to it. Um, so I don't want that to hold anybody back if you're like I was and you're thinking, I don't know if I can use an airbrush and you see people maybe on YouTube and they're looks like they're really applying very precise, thin layers of paint. When it comes to priming and base coating, it's really simple. It's only when you're getting to the more technical or you know, very thin, tight layers of paint that it gets challenging. Um, and even then, you'll pick it up. As you, that's kind of the learning curve to an airbrush. You'll start by priming and base coating, which is really dead simple. Um, you'll have no problem with that. Uh, and then, as you get practice with the trigger and more comfortable with it, you'll be on your way to getting better at controlling the flow. And then you'll be able to do things like thin layers or glazes or filters. Um, you can do a lot with an airbrush uh, and there's always practice. So don't let holding, you know, don't let fear of uh, using an airbrush hold you back from getting one. They're great. I'm, Extremely happy to have mine. I wouldn't go back. Uh, I don't use it for everything, but I always use it for priming. Uh, that's just a no-brainer. It's very simple to do with an airbrush. It's also fantastic for base coating. Um, it's fantastic for applying varnishes. So those three things you can do from the start. And it's really not that challenging. So with all that said, let's talk about the stats. Uh, the Badger is a 0.5 millimeter needle, a dual action gravity feed airbrush, and it has a one third ounce cup. And so you're asking, what does all that mean and why should I care? Dual action internal mix gravity feed airbrush. Sounds fancy. It's not really anything too spectacular. Uh, it's nothing that you have to think too hard about. Dual action means when you press the trigger, you're pushing down for air and you're pulling back to release the paint into the airbrush. So that's the dual action, down and back. Uh, there are single action, meaning you just push down and you get paint and air at the same time. 
this is definitely the preferred method. You want something that gets the air going and then the paint is more of a throttle, meaning the further you pull back, the more paint gets injected. It's way more precise. You can control it a lot better. The air is pretty much on or off for this airbrush, but the paint is very uh, well graduated, meaning it can really be controlled uh, how much paint you want. So if you're pulling back a little, you're only getting a finer spray. If you pull back a lot, I mean, it's shooting out. It also depends on the PSI that you have your compressor at, but for the purpose of this, dual action is what you want in an airbrush. Internal mix, meaning the paint and the air mix internal to the mechanism. It's, it's where the paint mixes in is internal to the airbrush, so it's not going to um, dry as quickly or atomize as quickly. It's not going to fly out of the cup. And then gravity feed. Gravity feed just means that the cup is on top uh, and gravity pulls the paint down into the airbrush and allows it to be mixed with the air. As opposed to a siphon feed, which um, if you look for a siphon feed, you'll see that there's a mechanism on the bottom that will suck paint up into the airbrush. Um, the benefit of that is you'll have more capacity, meaning you can hook up a really big um, you know, container of paint to the airbrush and you'll have paint for a lot longer, but that's more for bigger items uh, to paint. For a miniature, you don't need that much capacity. The cup is plenty big enough for anything you're gonna do. Um, even for bigger, even for terrain or um, you know, a tank or something, you can get good coverage on a full cup of, uh, I mean, I don't think I've ever filled the cup, so it's got plenty of capacity in a one-third ounce cup. Okay, so let's see the Badger Patriot 105 in action a little bit. Uh, we're going to prime Legolas from the Lord of the Rings box set. Before I prime, I, I like to just put a little bit of flow improver uh, into the airbrush. It just keeps the needle from getting clogged and paint drying on it. I'll just shoot that into my cleaning pot here. Takes a couple of seconds, no big deal. And then I grab my primer. I'm using Steinal Res here. It's my, my favorite primer. Uh, the black is what I like to use most often, unless I'm painting something, you know, very, very light, like a yellow or a white or something. But I'm starting with the black. You just pour a little bit in the cup. I don't know, maybe a third of the way full. I like to put on a little uh, disposable glove just to keep the paint off my hands. It's not really necessary, but I'll spray a little onto my paper and away we go. So yeah, I just use short, quick um, strokes here. You can just see how I um, am spraying it. it. It's not a consistent spray. It's more of little pulses. So you'll, I mean, this is easy to pick up. You'll be able to do this um, within the first few times of trying the airbrush. It's not, a, it's not difficult at all. It's really a lot like a spray can. You're just pressing down and pulling back uh, over and over. And there he is, mostly primed. You'll see that I find a little spot on the top of his bow there that is not primed, so I'll just catch that. And he's primed. Uh, that's it. Uh, I mean, I'm going to show you guys how I clean it now. I like to put a little water in one of these squeezy bottles. These are great. You just get most of the primer out with that little bit of water. Dump it out. Once you get the majority of it out, uh, I'll just grab, I mean, I use baby wipes here. I just use the, you know, Costco brand baby wipes and cover up the needle so the air can't get out. And then you can just backflow it like that. You see the bubbling there. That'll get everything out of the inside or most of it anyway. And then we just go back to the squeezy bottle. Uh, yeah, this is great. I mean, you could use obviously whatever to cover up the needle. Just don't poke yourself with the needle. Go back to the bottle, backflow it, uh, and just keep repeating that. I mean, this takes maybe a minute, two minutes to clean, and then I'll just use the baby wipe to get the inside, make sure it's all out. Uh, that's really all there is to it. I know I had some resistance about how hard these things are to clean or change colors, and what you're seeing right now is the full process. And I'll just put a little bit of water and shoot that through the airbrush into the cleaning pot, and you're good to go. Uh, you can see how clean that is. 
and you're ready for the next color. So I figured I would show you guys a zenithal uh, prime. You could see that I've switched to white here. I'll just spray on the little pad down there until I see the white coming out. Make sure it's clean and pure white. No black was left in there by mistake. And then it's the same process. You're just doing a light spray from the top. Uh, again, I'm doing the pulses. You can kind of see the white paint coming out there. I'll show you how it looks on the miniature once it's done. But for now, it's just short pulses. I wanted to show you what the Badger can do. This is a beginner technique. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's not hard to do. You'll get the hang of it. And you could practice this on a test mini. You could practice this on, you know, plastic spoons, whatever you have. Uh, just getting priming and zenithal down. Not hard at all. And here he is. Uh, so you could see him. You could see, you really can see the details in his face, on the bow. You could see where the light and shadow will fall on him. This is really all you need to get to with a beginner airbrush. Um, if you can just get this done, it's worth the investment in my opinion. Much better than a spray can, much smoother, especially the white. The white is really chalky in my opinion on spray cans. The black can be fine, but getting the zenithal is just a lot easier. And that's the Badger Patriot 105. Um, great for beginners because you can do the priming, you could do a zenithal. You can do base coating. You can, you know, shoot varnish through it. Um, it could even do smaller things like little highlights and thin lines. Uh, I mean, you could see here, I'm spraying any, anything from like a large dot to really small, fine, light dots. And this is, you know, this is all with the Badger. It could all do all these things which is why I recommend it. It really does everything I need it to do. I have three airbrushes now. The Badger is the one I use the most, and that's why I still recommend it for any beginners. It just does whatever you need it to do as a beginner for sure, and it grows with you. So there's no real need to um, spend two or $300 on your first airbrush. They're great, and I highly recommend them. Badger Patriot 105.